Welcome to the Beacon in Courage, powered by Beacon Life Church. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram. This is Beacon in Courage, your weekly dose of courage. Be all that God called and created you to be. A very, very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are so delighted to be coming your way today, as we always do every week. This is the Beacon in Courage. I'm yours truly, Dr. M. De Desire. We are powered by the Beacon Life Church in Nairobi, and I do believe that the Lord has kept you well wherever you are. If this is coming to you, uh, uh, you're meeting us for the first time, please do take a moment to touch the noti- notification bell and subscription button. Join our cyber family so that you are with us in real time whenever we bring out our content. Today I'm so delighted to be bringing a new, new friend of mine, served the Lord for many, many, many years. He's a legend for his generation, and I'm so delighted to be introducing to you my newest friend all the way from the Caribbean in Jamaica. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, Pastor Richard Harrell. You are so welcome, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Good, good. I'm very delighted to be sharing on your program today. You are so welcome to be on our set. And I know that uh, our people listening to you is going to be a great, great blessing. Uh, I hope so. Wonderful. <laughs> now, I know there are people listening to you for the first time, and they would like to know who you are. Will you please take a moment and uh, talk to us a little bit about yourself? All right. As <clears throat> was mentioned, my name is Richard Heron. Actually, my first name is Henry. Yes. But I went to school and, um, as Richard Heron, and yeah. I discovered that Henry was my first name. Okay. But I proudly say that my initials are HRH, His Royal Highness. <laughs> but most people know me as Richard. Yes. And I, I was born in Jamaica. Uh-huh. No, Jamaica has some mountains. Uh, the highest mountain is the Blue Mountain. Yes. But then there are also several what we call plains. Uh-huh. And I was born on in the plain of Vere. Okay. In the sugar industry belt of Jamaica. Okay. At least one half. Uh-huh. One half. Uh-huh. Um, I lived with my mother until my mother, my parents, mm-hmm. until age of 11, 12. Okay. No, I think I'll take that back. It's been so long now. Please <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> yeah. Until about the age of seven. Okay. Then I went to live with my grandmother. Mm-hmm. Reason is that uh, my parents had at the time seven children. Uh-huh. The eldest one lived with my grandmother. Uh-huh. In fact, the interesting thing she told me is that when she was born, my grandmother said, this one is mine, uh-huh. and said to, to our mother, no, you can go and have your own. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and so I lived with her until she passed. Yes. Um, I started elementary school. Uh-huh. Um, I think you call it primary school here. Yes. Yeah. And then I, there was a relative uh-huh. who came and asked my mother if I could come and live with him and his wife. Mm-hmm. Now, his wife didn't have any children. Mm-hmm. And so at the age of 12, I went to live with him. Um, and this was now middle Jamaica, close to the north coast, okay. up on the mountains okay. in the parish of St. Anne, okay. where I continued elementary school and then started high school. Mm-hmm. I lived there and, um, well, I, you know, I, I was born in an Anglican family. Okay. And so at the age of 12, the Anglican said that I had reached the age of accountability. Mm -hmm. So I was confirmed and became a member of the Anglican Church 
functioning as a server at the altar, singing in the choir. Okay. But as mischievous as anybody else. Yes. <laughs> and then I returned to live with my parents. Mm -hmm. And so I changed high school. Um, and one of the features of this change was that I traveled on the train. Yes. We call it the, the diesel or the Kalamazoo every morning, mm -hmm. um, several miles up the mm -hmm. mountains to go to school. Um, after high school, I worked for government for a short at a period of time. Okay. When the sugar factory in my area advertised a position which would pay me a lot more than what government was paying me. Okay. So I went to work. I actually worked in a distillery. Okay. Uh, this still is a place where they make rum. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I, the, the, the following year, I was promoted to a supervisor. Okay. And helped to recruit uh, as they expanded, recruit technicians and supervisors. Mm -hmm. And I worked there until um, about the age of 19. Okay. Um, well, I had received the, the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior mm -hmm. um, while working there. And then um, I, I, um, I answered the call of God okay. to, 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 to become a... That's at age 19. Age 19, okay. yes. And I started my preparation for ministry, yes. which lasted for three years. Mm. And at the age of 24, mm -hmm. I was married mm -hmm. and had my first assignment. Yes, sir. So here is this 24-year-old with a wife uh -huh. and now responsibility to pastor a church. Yes. So, hence my, as I mentioned earlier that I have been in ministry for 60 years. Yes. Because I'm now 84 years old. Amazing, amazing, um, amazing. In December, I'll be 85. Amazing, amazing. Uh, so, 60 years of ministry, Pastor Richard. I mean, we can sit here and talk until the cows come home, but yes, could right. you just give us a few highlights of what your ministry journey has been like? Our uh, ministry in Jamaica, well, the church that I pastored, I yes. pastored just one church in Jamaica. Okay. It was a new church. Yes. So was my home church. Mm -hmm. It was a time when um, they were planting new churches. So my home church was new. Mm -hmm. And then my first but the church I pastored was also a new church. There yes. were a handful of um, members. Mm. But one of the things that God did for that church was to move, relocate mm. a number of people, including a doctor, civil servant, a yes. number of engineers, mm. because I lived in an industrial area. Yes. And so those persons came to the nearest. There were members, there were older members. Some yes. of them were elders of churches. Mm -hmm. And so after a while, we had a vibrant congregation because yes. these, they, they, they had children, yes. young families. Yes. Came. Mm -hmm. So my church grew. Yes. But then um, we needed to reach the local people yes. because these were transplant that yes. moved into yes. the area. And I remember we had what we call a, we call it a crusade okay. in the United States. We do have those here, yes. A crusade. Yes. And I remember going out one afternoon advertising the crusade. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I drove into an area that I'd been for the first time. Okay. And I remember hearing myself saying, if you come, we will take you home. Why did I say that? Mm -hmm. The four or five cars that we had 
in the membership at the time, yeah. including my car, uh -huh. had to make trips that night to take people home. Yes. And believe it or not, those people haven't stopped coming. Bless the Lord. The, the, the pastor is from that area. Yes. The leading elder is from that area. Yes. Two and a half miles away. Yes. And that to us was a mini revival. Amazing. Right. And just by inviting them to come. Yes. And they came. Um, I was also a part of another movement of God. Yes where my mentor, mm. who was like Paul to Timothy, yes. um, God gave him a vision of mm. expansion, yes. including the setting up of a Bible Institute, uh -huh. preparatory school, yes. a vocational school and a home for the age. Yes. And I was a vital part of that development. Mm. I was thrust into a new phase of leadership, yes. including teaching in the Bible Institute yes. and um, involving, getting involved in the administration of this wider um, expansion yes. or development. Um, then the, 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 the transplant, the folk who had relocated to the area, yes. They lived in two different vicinities. Mm -hmm. um, and both groups yes. wanted to have a church in the area where they lived. Okay. And my wife and I got involved with the first group mm -hmm. and um, they had crusades. Mm -hmm. And so we were involved in giving leadership to the planting of a church in that area. Mm -hmm. When, um, well, the, the, the second group, mm -hmm. they were the first ones to say, let's do something about starting a church in, yes. in their area. And um, which was in the capital town in, yes. in that area, in that yes. parish. Um, and then when the other group heard, they said, so what about us? And because of the, uh, one person in that other group was more aggressive, yes. and I guess he was more affluent, okay. invested his own money uh -huh. and brought, I don't know if you know Tom Skinner, you know the name Tom Skinner? Not Tom familiar. Skinner yes. is um, one of those gifted African-American okay. evangelists. Okay. And so he brought him to Jamaica and several others. Uh -huh. But then we also worked with other group yes. and they planted a church there as well. Great. So we were a part of the planting of two new churches. Okay. Um, so, so in a period of about six decades, how many churches have you had direct involvement in terms of just, planting? Just, and just, just those three. Okay, wonderful. Um, but of course, we, we were involved in ministry in almost all the other churches. In yes. um, then um, we got involved with some student ministries, okay. uh, InterVarsity Christian Fellowship, which, yes. is, which is an arm of, in, well, Interschool Christian Fellowship, which yes. is an arm of InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. Wonderful. I worked um, with different sponsors in schools, okay. in retreats, camps, yes. and eventually I, I became a member, a board member of the InterVarsity Christian Fellowship before yes. I left. Um, and spoke at several camps. Yes. When my alma mater, uh -huh. That's the second high school that I attended. Yes. Discovered that I had become a minister. Uh -huh. They reached out to me and put me on their roster to speak at chapel. Uh -huh. uh, like every six weeks or so, I had to go and speak at chapel. Yes. And then there's another a real Ivy League um, high school uh -huh. um, further away. Because the principal and I were members of 
in the past the Christian fellowship. Yes. He also had me on the roster there. So I would go to speak with this. This was a busy, high school young minister you are. Yeah, <laughs> uh, busy, uh, busy, yes. busy. Um, and well, th there were things that happened that I was not even aware yes. that happened. Like for instance, I said to a group, I, a young man, uh -huh. I said, you know, I'm impressed to see how many of you have entered the ministry. Yes. And he said to me, oh, so you didn't realize that you were influencing us? Yeah. I, I was not. Uh -huh. But while they were in high school, and then a lot of young people were attracted to, 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 to our church. Uh -huh. Some of them came from different islands to, uh -huh. to, to go to Bible college. Uh -huh. right? They were from, they're from Guyana, from Trinidad, Barbados, uh -huh. um, Dominica. Yes. And most of them could not afford to go home for vacation. Uh -huh. So our home was out, their home away from home. Uh -huh. Plus the local people. And only recently, uh -huh. one of them said, Oh, so you didn't realize why we used to flock your house. Uh -huh. um, and then it occurred to me yes. that I was only 24 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so I was maybe the age of some of them, oh, wow. or so close to them. Yes. And I guess it made it easy for them to relate to me yes. after us because my wife was a vital part of our ministry as well. Wow. Okay, great. I mean, that's uh, quite a beautiful journey you've shared there. But I know that I want us to talk about the mentorship issue yet a little bit. But before we go to that, I know that at a certain point, your ministry moved from uh, your native Jamaican land into the United States for some years. Right. Let's hear a little bit about that transition, how uh, ministry in the U.S. was like and the, the transition between the, the differences in culture and ministry work and all of that. From <coughs> Well, somewhere along the line, it occurred to, to, to us, yes. my wife and I, that God was calling us into a global ministry. Yes. And when we thought through it, we, we said, ah, if we're going to be involved in a global ministry, we should be placed, say, in the U.S. rather than in Jamaica. Yes. And um, my, at that time, I, we, my sister had filed for me. Now, the reason that came about was that the other members of my family were privileged with long-term visitor's visa. Yes. But the first time I applied for my visa, mm -hmm. they said I didn't have strong enough ties in Jamaica. Yes. But they didn't want to prevent me from, because I was invited to, 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 to uh, my visit to the States was for ministry. Yes. And I remember the officer said, he said, Mr. Heron, I don't want to prevent you from going to minister in Jamaica. Yes. But I can only give you a single entry visa, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I cannot give your family a visa. Yes. But later on, we found a way to satisfy them that we had strong yes. ties in Jamaica. So they got multiple entry. Yes. But because my first visa was single entry, yes. all my other visas were simply entry. Yes. And it was it, it, it was painful. Can yes. you stand in a long line and every time and then <laughs> and then I was traveling now because by this time I was forced to um, seek employment outside the church. Yes. I was an insurance executive and I was traveling to Canada uh -huh. often and I always wanted to Return via the U.S. Yes. But then I'll have to go through this thing. So uh -huh. I, I was talking to my sister on one of my visits to the states, and she said, "Well, you know, there's a solution to the problem. Yes. I need to 
to adopt the daughter of the relative who's taking care of my mother. Yes. If you adopt her and she become a member of your family, mm -hmm. I could file for your family and she would be included and so Yes. While waiting for that to come through, um, where we're, we're at the point where we're about to, to be called. Yes. But the job letter that she had was still dated, so I needed a new one. Uh -huh. So the president of Ministries in Action, uh -huh. that was based in Miami, yes. uh, with whom we, we work closely as a church, was visited in Jamaica. Okay. And he actually had come to my office. He didn't, I didn't know. Yes. To invite me to, to work with Ministers in Action. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, well, I need a job letter. Can mm -hmm. you? And he says, well, I'll, I'll gladly sign the job letter. So he gave yes. me the sign the letter. But, and then he said, you know, I, I, I came to invite you to, become, to, to join us. Yes. But his plan was for me to be the representative of the organization in Jamaica. Yes. But it says, no, fine, you know, we'll find a place for you in, in the States. Yes. So our desire mm -hmm. and the revelation we had that we should headquarter our ministry in the U.S. Yes. came through as easy as that. Amazing. Beautiful. So we migrated to the, to, to the States. Which year is this when you migrate? Uh, what year? What year is this when you finally made it? That was about uh, 1984, 1985, okay. about there about. And um, so we worked from, I worked for Ministries in Action okay. in different capacity as director, as vice president. Um, Ministries in Action specialized in church growth. Okay. Um, they, they had a church growth strategy where they help churches to grow. Yes. Um, help churches to grow by introducing small group ministries, yes. um, personal evangelism, public witnessing, mm -hmm. discipleship, etc. And then they had introduced at the time mm -hmm. a new department mm -hmm. which was their way of encouraging churches to be involved in a holistic ministry. Okay. All of us getting involved in social activities. Yes. And I became involved in that phase of, mm -hmm. of, 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 of the ministry. Um, but prior to that, mm -hmm. I, 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 I was the English speaking director of the church growth strategy. Okay which um, involve working in churches in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and all over the Caribbean, including mm -hmm. Jamaica, Grenada, Dominica, St. Lucia, mm -hmm. Antigua. And um, I had coordinators in all of these territories that I had to supervise and yeah. help them with their training, etc. Wonderful. Right. All right, we talk uh, a little bit about mentorship. From where you are right now, having raised many people in the ministry, yourself having been mentored at a certain point in your life, how do you think the critical need for mentorship for the young generation? Well, um, my understanding of um, the mission of the church yes. is... Um, for me, Jesus trained leaders yes. and his leaders were equipped to disciple others. Yes. And that if you are not discipled, you cannot disciple. That's true. And discipleship is involves mentorship. Yes. Because you have to take folk under your wings. <laughs> Um, teach them. That's what he says. Yes. Let's, let's, let's teach them. Mm -hmm. Paul demonstrated this with, in his relationship with Timothy, Epaphroditus, yes. and, and, and others. Titus. Titus. Mm -hmm. And for me, I benefited from that. Yes. Because there was an older minister mm -hmm. who um, 
he supervised me, so to speak, yes. and monitored me and made sure that I got that preparation mm -hmm. in place. And um, consciously and unconsciously, I found that um, I was engaged. The people today who are in ministry mm. all over the world, and I've had something to do with the um, spiritual formation, yes. the growth and development. Mm. I think it is critical. This, critical. To me, this is God's plan. He it's says, God's plan. He says, go into all the world and make disciples. Wonderful. And you can't make disciples just by um, praying for them. Yes. <laughs> you need to go make them you have through to make mentorship them. You have and to build discipleship. A build a relationship yes. with them and develop an accountability. Yes. Um, response, um, relationship. Wonderful. Okay. Pastor Richard, will you take a moment and just uh, talk to us a little bit about a testimony that for you is a highlight of something that the Lord has done in your life over your years in ministry? Well, the, 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 the biggest, well, the first thing is um, the, receiving Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Yes. And um, then leading me in a strange and unusual way yes. to meet my wife yes. of 58 years. Amazing. Um, when I met her, I was not looking for a woman to yes. marry, but yeah. it just so happened that I had this strange attraction to her when I mentioned to her, she said, but the same thing is happening to me. Yes. <laughs> um, then, of course, Every, uh, most um, couples yes. desire to have children, and our first child was born until eight years after we were married. Wow. Um, we we end up having two children. Yes. Um, there was a time in my in our ministry where we lost the support of our denomination. Okay. And, but not the local church. Yes. We were ready to leave. Uh -huh. And the local church says, well, God sent you in here, your work is not finished, so where are you going? Yes. So we continued to work with them, uh -huh. and God miraculously not only provided for us financially, but um, He open doors for us yes. to be busier than before in ministry. Yes, sir. Um, not in the de denomination, but mm -hmm. um, like I said, the student ministry and and, 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 and other opportunities. Yeah. And, and that is maybe what um, caused us to think that mm -hmm. God was calling us into a global ministry. Yes. Not restricted to any one group. Mm -hmm. And during that time it occurred to me that if I were a gift yes. from God, mm -hmm. I was a gift to the universal church, not yes. just the local church. Bless the Lord. Right. Wonderful. For instance, if I were to tell you uh -huh. that for 11 years I served as a Methodist minister Oh. And until this day, I'm not a Methodist. Oh, wow. But yet I serve as a Methodist minister. Indeed, you never say you are. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and I remember us to facilitate a minister's retreat yes. prior to yes. Synod. And um, as I was sharing with them, there was one young man who came and said, Tell me, where did you get your PhD? Yes. I said, I don't have a PhD. Yes. He said, no, you're not speaking the truth. Yes. I said, no, I have a PhD. <laughs> and you know, he went back and went to London mm. 
and got his PhD and is now um, a Methodist representative of the United States. Nice yeah. yeah. All right, beautiful. Uh, Pastor Richard, we call this the Beacon in Courage mm -hmm. because we use this moment, the segment, the few minutes we share with people to speak a little encouragement, speak life, and speak hope in their lives. And uh, I just want you to look in that camera and uh, take a moment and give a word of exhortation and encouragement to those that uh, may be discouraged, may be broken, may be needing to hear a word from God. Yeah, well, life is difficult. Um, there are lots of challenges in life. And when difficulties arise, we sometimes blame ourselves. Yes. We sometimes blame others. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we blame the system, we blame the government. Mm -hmm. And um, we think sometimes that this is the end, because some people even end up um, committing suicide. Yes. Um, but then I have discovered that difficulties, in fact, somebody says that trials are not designed to make us better, yes. but to make us better. better. And that, like so many other things in life, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're these things are designed to make us, to mature us and to build character in us. And it's really a part of God's plan. It's not an accident. Yes. It's a part of God's plan. Yes, sir. And in my country, uh -huh. we have all kinds of interesting sayings. Mm. And one of them is, if you want good, your nose must run. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I am saying to you today, we might be facing all kinds of problems, financial problems, mm. it might be a problem with your health, problem yes. with your children, mm. or whatever. There are two things I say. Mm. Um, whether you're a Christian or not, I want you to know that you're not alone. Yes. And God has promised that He will be with you yes. and He will use mm. whatever you're going through mm. to mature you. Mm. In fact, to develop what the Bible calls endurance. Yes. And He says that that endurance, if you persist and continue to trust God, it will mature you yes. and bring you an amazing statement to the mm. point where you will lack nothing. Yes. So when the trials and the challenges come, yes. don't um, be angry mm. and, and, and be discouraged. Just think that mm. God is trying to move you to another level. So, you, so you, you're forced mm. to trust him. Yes. Because if, if the, those challenges don't come, then you just remain where you are. Yes. And there won't be any growth. Yes. There won't be any maturity. Mm. And uh, the character that needs to be developed in you will not. Yes. So, in fact, James says, count it all in joy. joy. Yes, sir. When you fall into temptation or yes. tribulation or trials yes. or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. In fact, a friend of mine is preaching a, a series right now yes. about James. Mm -hmm. And her title is, What Kind of a Person yes. Will Count It All in Joy? Mm -hmm. It is a person who knows yes. that God is not sadistic. Yes. God is not punishing you. Mm. But God is enriching your life and mm. God is trying to make you be better. Bless God forever. Okay. Beautiful word, beautiful word. There's a question I want to ask before you pray for the people. And this is the fact. I mean, you mentioned you're in, 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 in the fall you're going to be 85. Right. And many people are taken to 
the homes for the elderly before they are even your age. They are backs are bent over and they are not able to talk or be articulate and they need help in many ways. And I look at you, we've been with you uh, for some days here and you're strong, walking, making us juices and talk to us and minister to us. That's amazing. And we thank God for the gift for longevity on you, the blessing for long life. It is the blessing of God. But above the divine, what is the one or two things you can say about your physical strength? Well, um, if you want some humor. <laughs> I've been telling people recently that I have stopped aging. Oh, wow. <laughs> No, but um, <laughs> and but I've also been saying, yes, and, and you might laugh at me, that if Moses lived to 120, yes, sir, then I can live to 120. Oh, beautiful! All right, let it be so in Jesus' name. <laughs> in Jesus name. Uh, but really, um, I don't know. I I I attribute it to. The providence of God, yes, sir. Of God's grace, uh -huh. because my father died at age fifty-three. Wow. Um, of course, I don't think he took care of his body. Yes, um, because my father smoked until he stopped. My yes. father used to drink. Yes, um, I don't drink. I don't smoke. Yes, um, I'm very careful about what I eat. Yes. And um, I, I exercise not as much as I should. Yes. Um, the rest of it might be just DNA. Bless the Lord. Despite the fact that my father died at age 53. Yes. Um, and so I, I'm just thankful and trusting God every day. Wonderful. Um, there are certain diseases that I... That scared me, and I, I'm not looking forward <laughs> yes. to it. So, diabetes is one of them, and yes. I'm very careful. Yes. Um, I eat very little sugar. I don't eat a lot of carbohydrates. Uh -huh. um, and I've lost the taste of sugar and salt and yes. those things, and I'm happy about that. And I don't know. Yes. Um, like. More recently, like a year or two, um, I find that if I go to pour a drink, yes. I can't pour a full glass of a drink. Yes. You know, and I hope that helps. Wonderful. We bless God for you and yeah. how far you have come yeah. and telling the story of uh, such a journey. 60 years of ministry is no mean feat. That is more than a lifetime for many. And we bless God for your story. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank but before you, you pray for our viewers, what would be your parting shot? One statement, tagline, or One something statement. that you want them to remember always? Mm. Um, mm. Tagline. One statement. Yes. Um, well, there's so many sayings, so many yes. things. <laughs> Um, let's see. Um, well, I made one earlier where trials are not designed to make us bitter, yes, but to make us, make us better. better. And um, that God's grace yes. is sufficient. Sufficient. And what that means is, you know, when people talk about grace, mm -hmm. they usually think about the mushy feelings and things. But when I study about grace, I, I, I see something related to empowerment. Yes. For instance, I remember when Paul prayed for God to remove the infirmity. Yes. And God says, my grace is sufficient for you. Yes. For it is you when, know, you're when you're weak that I am that strong. That I'm strong. Yes. So, um, God's 
we, we can rely on, and, and for me, um, I, I'm forced to trust in God, and, yes, I, and, and, I, and I encourage you to do that. Wonderful. Um, I, I was listening to a, a service yesterday, yes. and it was pastor appreciation. Yes. And this lady says, it is with humility that I am, you know, saying what I am doing. But I have a, 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 a serious sense of pride. Yes. Because her daughter is the pastor. And yes. she was the one selected as a board member to, to make the presentation. Yes. And so I daughter and I were talking afterwards and I says, only your mother could do that. Because <laughs> in one breath she's talking about humility, yes. the other breath she's talking about... She'd be proud of it. Um, <laughs> but um, I have learned yes. that the way to up yes. is down. Yes, sir. The way to up yes. is down. That's true. The Bible says that if you humble yourself, yes. you will be exalted. He will lift you up. So the way to up is down. Well done. Great to hear you, Pastor Richard. Please take a moment and pray for our people. Good. Our Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. That you're sovereign. Mm. You're in control. Yes, Lord. Of everything and every one of us. Mm. And we praise you that you have caused our paths to cross right now. Yes. Where you listeners are wherever you are, at yes. home in your car, at work, mm. wherever at school. And here am I in the studio. Recognizing the presence of God, not only here in the studio, but mm. where you are. Yes, Lord. But Lord, we recognize that people are at different points in their lives, mm. different levels of spirituality with different needs. Mm. And I thank you for the privilege of bringing those needs mm. to you right now. We lift them up in our arms of faith. Yes, Lord. And Lord, although we are not seeing them eyeball to eyeball, but you see them. Mm. And you see their needs. Mm. And you say that even before we ask, you know. Yes, Lord. And that you're more anxious to answer than we are to ask. Mm. And so, Father, on their behalf, mm. I just ask you that you reach out and touch them. Yes, Lord. Lord, grant a, a, an acute awareness of your presence. Yes, Lord. Let them know mm. that you are always with them. Yes, and Lord. you understand and that you are able mm. to meet all of their needs. Mm. And so, Father, we just ask your blessing upon them. Lord, let them know. Let them feel your presence right mm. now. And know that as they reach out to you and we 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 stand with them yes we we, we just pray lord that you will bless them mm. lord we want to pray for that husband yes, right lord. now who is at its wit's end yes because of financial problems that he has yes Think of that mother who is distressed about her daughter. Mm. Oh, Father, we just pray that you will console her and let her know mm. that you will take care of the daughter. Yes, Lord. And you will deliver this family. Yes, Lord. And you will provide the school fee. Yes, Lord. Lord. You will heal that sick body. Mm. Lord, there is that person mentally deranged. Mm. Maybe just because they're not taking their medication. Yes. But we just pray, Lord, that you will draw near and hear our prayers. Yes, Lord. As we unite in this studio, mm. we agree, Lord, in mm. prayer. Mm. We give you thanks and mm. pray in Jesus' name. 
Oh, Amen. And Amen. Amen. And Amen. We Amen. say a big, big Amen, ladies and gentlemen. That was Pastor Richard uh, Heron. I'm sure that he's been a blessing to you. Do remember that you are a beacon shining Jesus light and do exactly that until the next time that we see you this time next week, wherever this finds you and whenever this finds you, uh, stay doing exactly that. Remember, you are walking by faith and not by sight. The Lord bless you, will love you so darlingly and the Lord strengthen you and empower you always until this time next week. Bye-bye.